everybody and welcome to a very beautiful stunning morning in the south of France it's the morning after the night before Von 2 wrecked us yesterday and uh, wrecked my bike so I've just given it a quick uh, give her a quick shower just to try and dislodge some of the um, some of the grit and dirt that was kicked up uh, frustratingly right after I'd um, got to the top of Von 2 my GoPro in minus three degrees started uh, started playing up a little bit it switched all languages to Japanese and um, the, the orientation of the the shot was upside down nothing I could do about that and I just couldn't get any footage which is a real shame because things took a, a very dramatic turn from that point it was as I said, minus three degrees, heavy hailstorms, and um, the descent, which was um, just the first part, five, five k, five six k from the the summit down to back down to Chalet Renard, was absolutely horrendous and terrifying. It is the I think I've done a video before where I said that's the coldest I think I've ever felt. This was a, a whole new level. Um, all the guys that had finished before me had already sort of gone down and I'd seen them coming back down on my way up and um, we're sort of shaking heads as if to sort of say, no, nah, this is this is not good, don't do it, turn around and go back. But um, Jason and I were at the top together, so we descended that section together and I can honestly say I thought there could have been some long-term problems from the cold that we were feeling. Jason this morning actually had said he's still got tingling in his fingertips, which doesn't sound too good. Um, but basically it was like little cold needles hitting your face from the hail, hands absolutely frozen solid and albeit only 5k downhill that felt like a very long time and um, when we got to the Chalet Reynard we both struggled to get off our bikes and walk inside the cafe where I have to say Peter had got some hot chocolates in they were waiting for us when we walked in and nothing has ever tasted so good in my life and, uh, than that hot chocolate. Um, we're all in a in a similar state. There's um, uh, there's something I really wish I'd been there to witness. Um, but it's it's given Kev Stephen his new name, new nickname of um, of Shaky Stevens. Uh, apparently he, <laughs> he had an espresso. I'm going to try and reenact this because it sounds hilarious. And I'll, I'll pop a photo up there that Sean Sean took. But um, we were all shake like violently shaking uncontrollably and um, Kev had been given an espresso and literally as soon as it was handed to him his hand shaking like that and just threw the, just threw the whole lot and I'm not sure if, how many times that happened before we finally managed to get a drink in him uh, but as this picture will show he was having to be uh, be fed by Darren because uh, he just couldn't hold on to a cup so that sounded like if I'd seen that it would have been worth the cold experience just to witness that and get it on camera but, but sadly no um, so we waited there for a while and, and we, we picked our moment really well it turned out to descend it's, um, it, it just calmed just long enough for us to get out of the real cold and down back to where the, the sun was shining a bit and start thawing out the descent was as you can imagine incredibly sketchy everybody thankfully was very cautious and um, I think there was only one real scary moment which again I'm gutted I didn't get on camera but even more so I'd rather have had it on camera from Keith's point of view who's just behind me um, where I managed to emulate my cycling hero by demonstrating just supreme bike handling skills it has to be said uh, back wheel went out I wasn't going fast by the way I've been incredibly cautious um, but there's these little I don't anyone that's done it will know there's there's some little black sort of snaking tarmac marks on quite a few sections of on two and they're slipperier, slipperier than the main surface and um, just approached the bend the back wheel hit one of these little marks and slid out which stood my bike up and I'm, I'm not a religious person but somebody was looking out for me at that point in time because 
I had no control and if something had been coming up the other way, game over. Um, but basically stood my bike up, I then hit the brakes to try and bring it back into the bend which locked both wheels up and I went straight across the other side of the road, off the road, into the gravelly bit of the side heading straight for the, the sort of cliff wall and now I'd like to say it was my divine handling but it wasn't, it was pure luck that I managed to basically bounce over I don't know 20-30 meters of rocks and gravel and then safely back onto the road again but um, that was a scary moment but thankfully everybody made it to the bottom um, Keith then had a puncher but luckily that was right near the end of the descent and it was front wheel so had that been further up the mountain who knows how that could have ended so um, extremely thankful to have got back down into Bedouin found a nice little sun trap outside a restaurant got some food in us and um, the fear from the, the previous sort of half an hour started to turn into fond funny memories and we're, we're all actually able to appreciate it a little bit now so it's all good but today I think we're going to be doing um, I think we're going for a, a more gentle ride certainly none of us are really feeling like anything too hilly so it sounds like we're possibly going to hit Gors de la Nesque, which was on my list of uh, venues to find and from by all accounts it sounds like it's kind of rolling rolling hills which is some very nice doable gradients and just stunning scenery so um, I think that is the plan we're going to be heading off at well in about half an hour's time I believe and if the weather stays like this we're gonna have the opposite problem to yesterday where we're gonna be we're gonna be too hot but this is absolutely this is this is what we came for let's be honest this is just just beautiful um, so yeah that's it last night was great after everyone's in really good spirits I think again thankful that we'd all We'd all done it, we've ticked it off, there were some great times. Everybody exceeded their expectations, I will say that. And um, even myself, I'd, I'd earmarked somewhere between two hours 30, two hours 40 for the climb. And I did it in 2.16, so very pleased with that. And Jason did sub 2.10, I think, two, two hours, eight minutes, something like that. Darren, Kev and Sean, I believe, all did it in under two hours. Certainly Sean did, I know. Darren, Darren and Kev were close by, so I'll, I'll have to check their, their Strava times, but I think they all did it in under two hours. And then the star of the show, surprise, surprise, Mr. Peter Patonk Wilson, one hour 44, something like that. And we genuinely could all have done, have taken a few minutes off those, because the last five from Chalet Renard to the top, in that weather, was definitely worth a few minutes without a doubt so absolutely chuffed a bits to have made it chuffed a bits to have got got a decent time and um, even more elated that we're back down sitting by a pool in sunshine having all survived it so all in all a really good day the evening was great we're all just sort of retelling our own versions of, of how it happened and uh, having a good laugh about it and, uh, absolutely brilliant I'll tell you what wasn't so good Mr Denton I know you watch these videos I'm pretty sure we unanimously decided when we were in Bedouin after coming down, let's just find the shortest, straightest, flattest route home and uh, so we can get back to the villa, dry off our clothes and get changed and freshened up. No. Basically, we were following Catherine, who's now known as Catnav because she's um, her orienteering skills are second to none. Uh, Peter had a blowout, so a couple of us stopped to, to wait with him while he changed his wheel and we said, in our infinite wisdom you guys go on ahead so Catherine led the other guys um, everyone barring myself Peter and Kev back to the villa and their Strava map looks kind of like this straight straight home we then had Keith the Hoff nav on our way home so our Strava map looks a little bit more like this straight whoa hang on where are we going we're going back up northern France I think we touched Paris at one point <laughs> Uh, kept going up a little bit more, back round again, a oh, couple of little U-turns, back down, eventually home. So we added a fair amount of climbing, a fair amount of kilometres to our legs on the journey home. Um, but in fairness to Keith, the roads we saw were absolutely stunning. It's how it's what you imagine you'll be riding when you come to the south of France with a bike. They're absolutely beautiful and under better circumstances I would have appreciated them fully. But um, at that point I think we were all just desperate to get, get back home, but there we go. 
So yeah, we didn't do our, we didn't continue our Patonk Championship last night. We we're all feeling pretty tired. Had a fabulous meal. Peter and Catherine cooked up beautiful steak and chips with uh, grilled vegetables. Wine was good. Beer was good. Food was good. Company was superb. Um, I'm embarrassed to be saying this while I'm still here with them, and there's a possibility they'll watch all this before before we get home. But um, I can honestly say. This is, this is the best group of people you could possibly come away with. If you're ever going to go away with people you've never actually met and know through, um, through an internet club alone, there's a massive element of risk of how we're all going to get on. But we're all bouncing off each other beautifully. It's, it's just absolutely brilliant. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this bit up here and um, dry my bike off get myself ready for uh, rolling out in 25 minutes. That looks pro, that kit with that bike, mate. Match is about as good as you can get. in the group and I'm thinking my bloody heart rate's not 160 can't yeah, be you've got a proper sweat on so I dropped back and it went off I'd obviously picked up somebody else's ah oh, right <laughs> so I had to delete theirs and then put mine back in again you feeling alright? yeah yeah it's a warm one isn't it? Yeah. so you picked up someone's heart rate that was really high yeah so who's come on then who's this? Yeah. 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 Mine's, been, mine's been in the 60s the 160s but mine goes up to the 190, so. Yeah, that's, that's my resting heart rate. <laughs> Today, Keith, I'm, I'm feeling it. Well, that descent, that's the kind of descent I love. Anything steeper and I'm too tetchy on the brakes, that was just, that was great, wasn't it? I've you and Peter for that on Monday. There we go. That's, it, that's here, is it? Is that, 60, is that 60 euro entry fee or 60 euro prize? <laughs> Peter, fancy winning 60 euros? Gorge de la Nesque, here we come. Is that 
them over there. That's, uh, Sean and... Sean. Yeah. No. I, know, I don't think Sean's got a, uh, no. a gilet or anything with him. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sean and Peter will be gone. Okay. I'm not chasing them down. <laughs> the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still stunned by it all, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the hole. Hello, 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 hello. Up, 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 up. Yeah, good man. <laughs> You're not done it until you've walked up here as well, though. I don't know how well you'll be able to hear me. I'm on my way back down. The gorge still a nest now. It got, uh, as with Mont Ventoux, very hairy, freezing cold, hailstones again, and uh, we ran for a cover in a nice little restaurant. Actually had a really good steak and chips, which probably wasn't the best idea given that I had steak and chips for dinner last night as well. But uh, it was too good to refuse. Another hot chocolate. Uh, a few comedy moments where we're all using the hand dryer in the in the toilet room to try and dry all our clothes out and uh, head back out on the road. I mean, this is just, I know I've said it, uh, I'm just repeating myself, but I don't, the weather made it, took the edge off it, obviously meaning we just wanted to get somewhere quick and, and hide away from it. But even so, I mean, this place is just phenomenal. It really, really is. The other guys have all shot off ahead. I've held back so that I could try and take it in a little bit as much as anything else. But also, given my incredibly scary moment yesterday on the descent from Von Tu, I, I am absolutely not risking it. I think it's possibly a, a black mark against Victoria Corsa tyres which have held up really well so far in all situations apart from wet greasy corners and uh, I don't have a huge amount of faith in them anymore so I'm taking this very very slow what I am hoping is that by the time I get to the bottom of this gorge at least someone will have waited because I have no idea how to get home from here or back to the villa so Catherine's behind me, luckily, and she seems to be the uh, the expert at finding and navigating the way around. So, if there's no one else there, I'll, I'll hang on for her anyway. But uh, for now, I'm just going to take all this in.
well done. Cat Nav and the Hoff, get us home. I don't know how this, I don't know how this does this. You save right and it automatically uploads it to Star Wars straight away. Oh, it must be, is it connected to your phone? It is connected so to your phone. So I think what it'll do is it'll, it'll use your, your network to your phone. Yeah. And then boom. I think that's how mine worked it. Is Jason's, yeah, Jason's back. There we go. All good. Peter's probably got his insight in bed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Peter's is there.